r slash no sleep posted by you slash like i did our local grocery store started selling products that don't exist nostalgia can be such a fine feeling a smell linking back to an almost forgotten encounter a movie that transports you right back to your childhood a taste reminding you of a much simpler time the town of marvel had a way of giving you this intense sensation every day through every month i think most of the reason for it was the seclusion of it all marvel is rather small we only have the essential shops to fulfill our needs but if we really wanted to escape to a bigger city then we would have to endure hours in the car you might think we'd find it hard to breathe mom dad and i hardly ever left town if we did then it was only for a bigger purchase of something we could not get here or for a vacation during summer nobody ever left marvel in autumn and winter as that's when we'd make our money for the whole year you see this tiny place in the middle of nowhere is quite the tourist attraction Maybe it's due to the beautiful nature surrounding us or the coziness of our unique little town but as soon as the leaves start falling the visitors stumble in. They take walks through our medieval old town, have cake and coffee in our cafes, or go hiking through the woods surrounding us. I always had a special place in my heart for the cold season, it brings some rolling into our town. Don't get me wrong I do enjoy Marvel but the older I grow, the more I'm craving to see the big world, meet new people, see what is out there. The visitors give me a sensation of what that might be like. This year I swore to myself to enjoy the cold months the best I could as I would be moving away for college next year. It would be the last year I'd help my parents in their coffee shop and the last year I'd get to spend with my two very best friends who lived on the exact same street as my family. Little did I know that this year would by far be different than anything I'd ever witnessed here. It started with something as banal as it can be. Our supermarket. I know we like nostalgia but we still live in modern times and can buy the same things that are sold everywhere around the country. We only have one supermarket in town but it is as big as they come. It sells everything from food to drinks, drugstore articles, and handyman stuff. Our Coke was Coca-Cola or Pepsi. Our cereal Lucky Charms or Honey Puffs. Our Lays were half filled with air. You know all the stuff you can get at most stores. The only difference would maybe be the fresh produce. Our milk, butter and eggs come from local farms which I always appreciated. Well, now it seems they've taken the normality out of Marvel for good. It was a boring ass Saturday, as it is every week in Marvel, when we started noticing the changes. Damien, Tessa, and I were on our way to buy snacks for the evening and hopefully find someone to get us some beer. I feel like it's gonna rain tonight, we should do a movie marathon, Tessa exclaimed on our way to the store. Autumn comes early in Marvel. The hot weeks of summer were slowly coming to an end. We had spent almost every day by the lake and the months passed like seconds. It felt like last winter was only yesterday. Damien's blonde curls were growing out, Tess's sun-kissed Dan was slowly fading, and I was getting ready to go back to help my parents selling coffee and tea. Soon the first visitors would come in. Some come for a day, some stay for days or even weeks at the local B&B. Uck, Damien grunted. What fucking movie have we not seen yet, Tess? Do you have a better idea? She hissed back. Spending basically every single day together was starting to show its toll on us. These were the last carefree days we had though and I wanted to cherish them and do as little as we could as long it was still time to relax. Soon we'd have to get back to studying and working. The automatic doors to our local Mars store opened and we were greeted by the cold breeze of the air conditioner. There was a distant melody playing from the speakers of the store. Something old and cozy. I guess they were trying to get us into the holiday spirit already to frame a need for consumption. Most grocery stores have a very specific setup. They start with greens and fruits because when you start shopping your mind is focused and you might want to go for the healthy options. You start filling up your cart with them and when you make your way to the end of the store the focus is killed and you go for the sweets. Well, my friends and I usually skip the healthy section altogether. Today however they caught our attention. We had only stepped in and our awareness was sharp. What the fuck? Tess whispered. None of the fruits looked remotely like anything I'd ever seen before. There were bananas three times the size of the ones we know with a purple coat. The apples were tiny and came in plastic buckets. The cucumbers were shaped like pretzels. This had to be a joke or some kind of prank but since when did grocery stores care to play with their customers? This is hilarious, Damien said and walked up to strawberries that all looked as if someone had taken a bite of them already. I had no idea what to say and my initial reaction was laughter, though deep inside I knew this wasn't funny. I felt a knot tie in my stomach, something was awfully off. We continued walking through the aisles, looking for another customer or worker. Marvel was a small place, after all, we knew almost everyone who lived here. 
We didn't see anyone inside but our attention was focused on the colorful items on the shelves anyway. At first, I thought the crop had just been awfully weird this year but the packaged products were even more astonishing. Every single item had been replaced by a new version. Everything was similar to what we knew but just slightly off, just a tad different. The Coke was green, crisp packages were vacuum sealed not leaving any air inside, all the brand names had changed just enough to make us take a second look. Reese's, Mr. Plopper or Vanished. Maybe the owners changed and they're only selling off brand stuff. Cause it's cheaper or something, I suggested. And they decided to exchange everything in one night? I was here yesterday and I swear it was all normal, Damien responded while walking towards the shelf and touching anything he could get his hands on. Let's ask her. Tess started walking up to a woman dressed completely in black with a top hat completing her outfit. As she saw us approach she turned around and smiled. Well hello there kids, how are you doing on this swell day? Um, hello. Are you from around here? I asked. She shook her head, never breaking that smile. I wasn't but now I am. Tess and I looked at each other, not sure what to respond to that. What do you think about the products in this shop? Damien asked. They are terrific. Wonderful. Delicious. She responded. Oh, Logan, sweetheart you should get some of these biscuits and bruskets for the coffee shop. She said as she gently grazed her fingers down my face. They felt like sandpaper. I had no idea how to respond. I'd never seen this woman before in my life. I thought she was a tourist. Without saying another word she turned around and continued shopping all while humming some melody. It took me a little moment to realize that she was humming along to the music coming from the speakers. It was still the same song that was playing when we walked in. As if it was going on a loop. This is so freaky, Damien whispered. Are we dreaming? Tess chuckled but I didn't feel like joking around. I was genuinely disturbed. Let's go to the register, I suggested. The only cashier working that day was Matthew, a guy we knew from school. He was a bit of a bully and rude every time we came to buy anything honestly but today he looked different. He was smiling and humming just like the lady and waved furiously when he saw us. Matt, what the hell is going on? What happened to the store? I almost shouted. He shook his head while making intense eye contact. Absolutely nothing happened, what are you talking about? We didn't buy anything and just walked out. Damien suggested getting some of those weird snacks or at least the crazy fruit but being in that store somehow made me feel nauseous. I felt like I was just on the brink of passing out. Altogether I was simply feeling wrong. That's the only way I can describe it and so I told my friends I would be going home for the night. The closer we got to our street, the more tired I became. I started wondering if I was hallucinating but it seemed as if my friends were witnessing the same peculiar events as me. We said goodbye and all went to our own homes to check with our parents. As I opened the door to our home, a shiver went down my spine. I smelled something cooking in the kitchen. Something both sweet and bitter but the scent wasn't the weirdest part, it was the music. The same melody from the Mars store was coming out of our radio. Mum? Dad? I shouted. Oh honey, you're home. Come in love, we were just about to have dinner. My mum was wearing a dress and white gloves, my father was dressed in a brown suit. Is there a special occasion? I asked. What could be more special than a loving dinner with your family, son? My father responded in a dry tone. I took a seat and swallowed. Um, mom, dad, have you been to the store today? Why yes, I went just this morning to buy some flatters and branks, my mom casually answered. What? She pointed at the pan that was filled with some weird substance, it looked gooey and was formed into squares. Like a mixture of pudding and crackers. Both my parents looked at me as if I was the one losing my mind. My stomach started rumbling again. Maybe I was getting sick. I wondered if I was having a fever. I'm sorry, I'm not feeling so well. I'll take a little nap, okay? You're not eating with us? My mother asked with a strange twitch in her eye. I'll eat later, I mumbled and made my way up the stairs. You better. I heard my father shouting from the kitchen. Now I don't have to tell you that something awfully off was taking place. I simply couldn't understand what it was, I felt like I was losing my mind. And things didn't stop there. When I woke up again it was dark outside. A look at the alarm clock resting next to my bed showed me that I had slept for 5 hours straight. I felt like I was starving and wondered if all the weirdness of today had just been a dream. I rubbed my eyes and stumbled out of bed, ready to go downstairs and grab a snack. Normally my parents would be asleep by now but I still heard some commotion from downstairs. 
I grabbed my phone and suddenly everything that happened earlier became far more real again. Do not eat anything. We'll explain later. Tess had sent me this text a couple of hours ago. I texted her back and tried calling but got no reply. Slowly I opened my door to see what my parents were up to. At first, I thought the door was locked but after pushing a little I realized it was blocked by a pile of food laying in front of it. All things I didn't recognize. I tiptoed towards the stairs. This was the first time in my life that I had ever been freaked out by my own home and family. And then I heard them. My parents were talking and laughing but they weren't alone. There were a bunch of other voices I didn't recognize but the one sound that stood out was the melody. They were still listening to it. There was no way I was going down there to confront them. I got back to my room as fast as I could, locking the door behind me. My heart started racing, the cold sweat was giving me shivers and I felt completely out of my mind. I always knew Marvel is the sole definition of the most wonderful place on earth. It is safe and cozy and nice. It looks just like you would imagine Santa's village. The people are friendly, even the tourists. But now something else must have crept in here. Something that doesn't belong and it is somehow connected to the grocery store with the items that are all just slightly off. I have no idea what to believe anymore but I feel the deep need to get out of here. Before more of them appear, 